Magandang araw mga bata! Ako si Ma'am Regine, ang teacher mo sa math. Today we will be learning about rational numbers. This is a topic under Grade 7 Mathematics, Quarter 1, Lesson 5. Kaya tara na, and let's do the math. Rational numbers are numbers which can be written as a quotient of two integers a over b, where b is not equal to zero. Any rational number can be expressed in fraction form or decimal form. One example of rational numbers are fractions. Fractions represent equal parts of a whole or a collection. This is an example of a fraction. A fraction usually have two numbers, isa sa taas, this is called a numerator, at isa namang number sa baba, which is called the denominator. They are separated by a line. Start tayo dito sa numerator. Numerator is the number of the parts that we have. Denominator is the total parts in whole. This line that separates the numerator and the denominator is sometimes called as the fractional bar while others call it the fractional line or simply line. However, yung iba ang tawag dito ay vinculum. So, you can actually refer to this line whichever you prefer. Okay lang naman yun. So, long as hindi tayo malilito sa kung ano ang numerator at saka kung ano ang denominator. Ito example natin ng fraction ay binabasa as 1 4. 1, referring to the numerator, and then fourth, kasi ito yung kanyang denominator. For us to get to know more about fractions, meron tayong pizza. Hinati siya sa four equal parts. Four equal parts refers to the denominator, total parts in whole. Yung buong pizza na iisang piraso ay hinati equally sa apat. Numerator is the number of parts that we have. Ibig sabihin, out of four pizza, isa yung ating kinuha. The rest na tatlo ay kinuha ng iba or nandito lamang. Kaya ito ay nagre-represent sa one-fourth. Out of apat, isa yung kinuha natin. Fractions are classified into different kinds. First is called the proper fraction. It is a type of fraction whose numerator is less than the denominator. This is an example of a proper fraction. Yung kanyang numerator is less than or mas mababa sa denominator. So dito ang ating numerator ay 1, mas mababa siya kaysa sa 4. Any fraction na mas mababa ang kanyang numerator sa denominator ay example ng proper fraction. Another fraction is called the improper fraction. This is a type of fraction whose numerator is greater than the denominator. So this is an example of the improper fraction. Kung mapapansin natin, mas mataas na yung kanyang numerator, which is 7. Mas malaki siya sa kanyang denominator, which is 4. This is read as 7 fourths. This is how it looks like. Meron tayong dalawang pizza. Each pizza ay cut into four equal parts. Ang ating kinuha ay pito. Ang isang pizza ay hinati sa apat. Itong isang buong pizza, cut into four equal parts, ay kinuha natin. At nagdagdag pa tayo ng isa pang buong pizza, hinati rin sa apat, pero nagtira na tayo ng isang parte. Yung tatlong parte ay kinuha natin. So kung bibilangin natin siya, yan ay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Kaya ang numerator natin ay 7 at ang ating denominator ay 4 dahil each pizza ay divided into 4. Another example is the mixed fraction. This is a combination of a whole number and a fraction. Ito yung kanyang fraction part. Meron ding numerator at denominator. Meron siyang kasamang whole number. This is an example of a mixed fraction. Kung meron tayong dalawang buong pizza na hinati sa apat, ito ay nagre-represent ng whole number. Meaning, ang isang buong pizza ay hinati sa apat. At itong apat na ito ay nakuha. 
kaya tayo merong whole number. Meron tayong isang pizza na hinati rin sa apat. Yung tatlo ay ating kinuha at yung isa ay natira. Kung ito ay whole number na, ito ang gagamitin natin for fraction. Since hati siya sa apat, ang denominator natin ay 4. 3 dahil kinuha natin yung tatlo. 1, 2, 3. May natirang isa. This is read as 1 and 3 fourths. Let's go to converting mixed fractions to improper fractions and vice versa. Kung napansin natin kanina, nung tayo ay nagbigay ng example for improper fraction at mixed fraction ng pizza, pareho yung kanilang itsura. Ito ay 7 fourths yung ating improper fraction. This is equal to a mixed fraction which is 1 and 3 fourths. Pareho lang yung kanilang itsura. However, yung isa ay improper fraction. Wala siyang whole number na kasama. Yung isa naman ay meron siyang whole number na kasama at yung kanyang fraction part ay proper fraction na. Paano natin nasabi na equal lang sila bukod sa nakikita natin yung kanilang illustration? Let's learn on how to convert the mixed fraction to improper fraction first. Meron tayong mixed fraction. Ito ay may whole number at may fraction part which is a proper fraction. First step para tayo makapag-convert ng isang mixed fraction to improper fraction ay multiply the denominator by the whole number then add its product to the numerator. Ito ang ating denominator, ito ang ating numerator at ito ang ating whole number. Sabi ay, unahin daw na i-multiply si denominator kay whole number. After natin i-multiply, i-add natin yung ating nakuwang product sa numerator. And this is how it would look like. Step 2, the result will be the numerator, then copy the denominator. So natin nakuha itong 4 plus 3. 4 times 1, multiply the denominator by the whole number. Ang ating result or product is 4. Then add to the numerator. 4 plus 3 is equal to 7. And then copy the denominator which is 4. Kaya naging 7 fourths. So mapapansin natin, ang mixed fraction natin na 1 and 3 fourths ay talaga namang equal sa ating improper fraction which is 7 fourths. This is the way of converting mixed fractions to improper fractions. Pupunta naman tayo sa converting the improper fractions to mixed fraction. If you have here 7 fourths, which is the improper fraction, step 1, divide the numerator by the denominator. The quotient is the whole number tayo ay gagamit ng long division process. Si 7 ay nasa loob ng ating division line. Siya yung ating numerator. Si 4 naman ay nasa labas ng ating division line. Siya ay ang ating denominator. Let's start dividing. 7 divided by 4 is 1. Then 1 times 4 is equal to 4. 7 minus 4 is 3. 3 is our remainder. Step 2, for its fraction part, use the remainder as the numerator and copy the denominator. Kung meron na tayong whole number, since sa 7, sa 7, meron tayong 4, which is isa, pero may remainder tayong tatlo. Gamitin natin si remainder as numerator at si denominator naman na 4 ay kukopyahin lang natin. Therefore, ang ating magiging fraction part ay 3 fourths. This is the remainder, yung natira. At this is 4. Kinopya natin yung original na denominator. Kaya for 7 fourths, this is also equal to 1 and 3 fourths. Another classification of fraction are called the equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are fractions that have different numerators and denominators but have the same fractional value. This is an example we have here, 15 over 30. Usually, ang mga numerators and denominators na may mas malaking numbers 
ay mayroong corresponding na fractions na may mas maliit na numerator at denominator pero pareho lang talaga yung value nila. Because these fractions na may malaking number as numerators and denominators can be further reduced to its lowest term or it can be simplified. To reduce a fraction to its lowest terms, divide the numerator and denominator by their greatest common factor, which is called the GCF. To find the GCF, you have to list the factors and get the biggest common number. So, ating ililista ay yung factors ng numerators na 15, ganun din yung factors ni 30, which is the denominator, at yung pinakamalaking number na pareho sa kanilang dalawa, yun yung kanilang GCF. Listing down the factors of 15, we have 15 times 1 and 5 times 3. Wala naman ang iba. For 30, we have 30 times 1, 10 times 3, 5 times 6, and 15 times 2. Since tayo ay nakapaglista na ng factors ng ating numerator at denominator, hahanapin na natin yung mga factors na pareho or common sa kanilang dalawa. Let's start. So, sila ay parehong may 15. Pareho rin sila na may 1. Pareho rin sila na may 5. At pareho rin silang may 3. Itong apat lang ang factors ni 15. Wala siyang 30, 10, 6, and 2. So, ito lang yung kanilang mga common factors. Tayo ay naghahanap ng kanilang greatest or pinakamalaki na common factor. So, among these four, 1, 3, 5, and 15, ang pinakamalaking number ay 15. Therefore, the greatest common factor of 15 and 30 ay 15. Kapag nakuha na natin ang GCF ng numerator and denominator, we will use this number para i-divide natin both the numerator and denominator kay GCF nila. So, let's start. We have 15 divided by 15 and we have 30 divided by 15. The answer is 1 over 2 or 1 half dahil 15 divided by 15 ay 1. 30 divided by 15 is equal to 2. Therefore, we can say that 15 over 30 is equal to 1 half. They are equivalent fractions. Another classification of fraction ay ang similar fractions. These are fractions with the same denominators. And these are the example. Sometimes similar fractions are also called as like fractions. Pare-pareho lang yung kanyang mga denominator. Kung meron tayong tatlong fraction na ibinigay, yung denominator ay pare-pareho. In this case, pare-pareho na 4. Iba-iba man ang numerators na binigay in each fraction. We have 1, 2, and 3. So long as yung kanyang denominators, yung mga numbers na nasa baba, ay pareho, these are called similar fractions. On the other hand, Ang opposite ng ating similar fraction ay this similar fraction, which are fractions with different denominators. This is an example. The similar fractions are also called as unlike fractions. Iba-iba yung kanyang denominators, yung mga numbers. If for example, we have here 2, 3, and 4. Iba-iba yung denominator. Merong mga cases na pwedeng magkapare-pareho yung numerator, pero yung denominator ay magkakaiba pa rin. These are still called dissimilar fractions or unlike fractions. Ang ating laging basihan ay yung denominators. Now that we know the basics of fractions, let's go to another example of rational numbers, the decimal numbers. Decimal numbers are numbers whose whole number part and fractional part are separated by a decimal point. These are some examples of decimal numbers. Kung meron tayong example na decimal na 0.8, lahat ng mga numbers na nasa kaliwa ay whole numbers at lahat naman ng mga numbers na nasa kanan ay decimals. Ito yung kanyang fraction part. Whole numbers and decimals ay separated by a decimal point. Lahat ng nasa kaliwa ni decimal point ay whole numbers 
at lahat ng kanyang nasa kanan ay mga fractional part or decimals. If we are learning about decimal numbers, it is very important that we also learn the decimal place value chart. For the whole part, ito yung mga parte ng isang decimal number na nasa kaliwa ng decimal point. Ito yung kanyang decimal place value. Nagsisimula siya kay ones and so on. Ito naman yung kanyang decimal part. Ito yung kanyang fractional part na nasa kanan ni decimal point. Nagsisimula siya kay tenths. Ang mapapansin natin dyan ay... Si decimal part ay nag-uumpisa kay tenths, wala siyang ones. Ito namang mga whole number part ay walang th. Ito mga decimal parts ay meron. So, yun yung isang difference nila na madali nating mapapansin. Nagbibigay tayo ng example kung meron tayong 5.7 na decimal number. Ito ang kanyang decimal point. Yan ang nasa gitna. Lahat ng nasa kaliwa ni decimal point ay whole number. Kaya naman si 5 ay isang whole number. At ang kanyang place value ay ones. 5 is a whole number. Place value niya ay ones. Si 7 naman ay nasa kanan ng ating decimal point. Therefore, siya ay isang decimal part. At ang kanyang place value ay tenths. Decimal place value tenths for 7. Magbigay pa tayo ng isang example. We have here 138.05. Mag-start tayo sa mga numbers na ating makikita sa kaliwa ng ating decimal point. Ito yung ating mga whole numbers. Ang 8 ay, ang kanyang place value ay 1s. Ang 3 naman ay 10s. At ang 1 ay 100s. So, for whole numbers, ito ang ating place value. Yung 8 ay 1s, yung 3 ay 10s, at yung 1 ay 100s. 138. Para naman sa mga numbers na nasa kanan ng ating decimal points, these are the decimal part. Yung 0 ay nakatapat kay 10s, kaya yun ang kanyang place value. Si 5 naman ay 100s ang kanyang place value. To summarize, ito ang ating place value ng decimals. 0 is 10s and 5 is Hundreds. Learning the decimal place value is important for us to convert decimals into fractions and fractions into decimals. Expressing rational numbers from fraction form to decimal form and vice versa. The general rule in converting a fraction into a decimal is to divide the numerator by the denominator. Tayo rito ay may example. We need to express 4 fifths into a decimal form. This is the step-by-step -step process. First, we need to place the numerator inside the division line and the denominator outside it. Kung ito ang ating division line, nandito ang 4, siya ang ating numerator sa 4 fifths, at 5 naman ay nasa labas dahil siya ang ating denominator. Step 2, divide the numerator by the denominator. Kaya mag-divide na tayo. 4 divided by 5 is 0. We need to place our quotient on top of the numerator. 0 times 5 is 0. 4 minus 0 is 4. Meron tayong remainder. Dahil meron tayong natirang apat, kailangan nating mag-proceed pa o magpatuloy pa sa ating division process. To do so, you need to add a decimal point after the quotient and the numerator inside the division line, then add a zero after it. Maglalagay tayo ng tuldok sa ating sagot sa taas after ng zero. Lalagyan din natin yung sa tapat niya after ng numerator. Magkatapat dapat yung mga decimal points ng ating quotient at ng ating numerator. After nating maglagay ng mga tuldok or mga decimal points, make sure to add zero sa loob katabi ng numerator. Then, bring down 0 and proceed with the long division process. Dahil nag-add na nga tayo ng 0 dito, we can bring it down to make 4, 40. And then, we can divide 40 by 5. So, 40 divided by 5 is 8. 8 times 5 is 40. 40 minus 40 is 0. Wala na tayong remainder. Therefore, 4 fifths is equal to 0.8. 4 fifths when converted into a decimal, 0 0.8 ang ating magiging sagot. Next, from decimal form, gagawin naman natin siyang fraction form. 
So we have here 0 0.8. Let's express 0 0.8 and convert it into a fraction. Ang basic rule natin ay to convert decimal into fractions, use its digits disregarding the decimal point as the numerator and select the correct power of 10 as the denominator. Kapag tayo ay mag-convert ng decimal into fractions, napaka-importante na alam natin yung decimal place ng decimal number. Ito ang kanyang step-by-step -step na process. First, we have to determine the place value of the digits. Ano nga ba si 0? Ano ba si 8? Ito ang kanyang place value ayon sa place value chart. Nahahati sila ng decimal point sa gitna. Lahat ng mga nasa kaliwa ni decimal point ay whole numbers. Zero is one sa kanyang place value. Lahat ng nasa kanan ng decimal point ay yung kanyang decimal part at ang place value ni 8 ay tenths. Dahil alam na natin ang place value ng 0 0.8, we can use the digits after the decimal points as numerator. Itong 8, after the decimal point, lahat ng mga numbers na nasa kanan ay gagamitin nating numerator. And then we can use its place value, which is in the power of tenths, as its denominator. Gagamitin daw natin iyong mga numbers after the decimal point as numerator at yung kanyang place value for denominator. So, litin lang natin na si 8 ay ang ating number after decimal point. So, itong ating numerator at ang kanyang place value ay tenths. This is how it would look like. 8 yung ating magiging numerator at 10 naman is based from its place value which is tenths. Kaya siya 10. Kung hundreds, magiging 100 to. Kung thousands, magiging 1,000 yung kanyang denominator. Kaya naman ang denominator ay nababase talaga sa place value ng ating decimal part. 0 0.8 is equal to 8 tenths. Ang 0 0.8, if converted or expressed into fraction, siya ay katumbas ni 8 tenths. Kapag meron na tayong fraction form na convert na natin si decimal number into a fraction, if we see that it can still be reduced to its lowest term, do so if needed. Si 8 over 10 or si 8 tenths ay may kalakihan pa. Pwede pa natin siyang i-reduce sa lowest term. Pwede pa siyang paliitin. This process is known as simplifying fractions. Si simplify natin, i-reduce natin, paliliitin. Meaning malaki pa yung number sa numerator and denominator. Pwede pa siyang lumiit. Paano natin gagawin yun? Tulad ng ating nagawa kaninang proseso under equivalent fractions. Hahanapin muna natin ang kanilang greatest common factor. Ano nga bang factor yung pinakamalaki na common both to the numerator and denominator? First, you have to list down the factors. Ang factors ni 8 ay 8 times 1 and 4 times 2. Si 10 naman, ang kanyang factors ay 10 times 1 and 5 times 2. Therefore, ang common sa kanilang dalawa ay 2 lamang. 2 is the greatest common factor of 8 and 10. Kapag alam na natin yung kanilang GCF, pwede na natin siyang i-divide both by the numerator and the denominator. 8 divided by 2 and 10 divided by 2, ang ating magiging sagot ay 4 fifths or 4 over 5. Meaning si 8 tenths at si 4 fifths ay pareho lang ng fractional value. They are equivalent fractions. Therefore, 0 0.8 is equal to 4 fifths. Magbigay tayo na isa pang example, 138.05. Paano naman natin ito gagawing fraction? Importante na, alam natin yung kanyang decimal places. Gagawin lamang natin yung same process that we did earlier. 138, alam natin sila yung whole numbers. Ito ang kanyang corresponding place values, kada number. Ito rin naman ang corresponding na place value ni 0 at 5. Therefore, 138.05, when converted or expressed into a fraction form, ito ang lalabas. 138 ay yung kanyang whole number. And then, 5 over 100, ito ay nanggaling dito. It's a mixed fraction. Combination siya ng whole number at ng fraction dahil itong example ng decimal number na ito ay merong whole number. 5 over 100 ay ang kanyang fractional part. Paano naging 5 over 100? 0 and 5 
Ang significant digit lamang dyan or yung importante lamang na number ay 5. Hindi natin kailangan ilagay na 0, 5. 5 lang is enough. Then, 100. Saan ba galing yung 100? Ito ay galing sa kanyang place values. Si 5 ay nakatapat kay hundreds. Kaya, 5 ang numerator at 100 ang kanyang denominator. Dahil ito ay nababase sa kanyang place value. Kung ito ay si 5 yung nandito, therefore, ito ay magiging 5 tenths lamang. Si 5 ay nasa thousands, ito ay magiging 5 over 1,000. Kung may number dito kay tenths instead of 0, halimbawa 1, ilalagay natin siya dito. Pero kung 0 lang, hindi na. Say for example, 1, 5 ang ating decimal part. Yung ating last na decimal number ay nakatapat sa hundreds. Kaya ang ating fraction ay hundreds talaga. Then, 138 and 5 over 100, pwede pa siyang lumiit, kaya pa siyang paliitin. Pwede pa natin siyang i-reduce into its lowest term. Reduced into its simplest form, ito ay magiging 138 and 1 over 20. Si 5 over 100 ay naging 1 over 20 dahil ang kanilang GCF ng 5 and 100 ay parehong 5. Kaya 5 divided by 5 is 1, 100 divided by 5 is 20. 1 over 20, ito na yung kanyang simplest form. Hindi na siya kaya pang ibaba. Yung whole number ay kukopyahin lang naman. Ang ating nire-reduce ay yung fraction part lamang. Kaya naman, from 138.05, this is equal to 138 and 1 over 20. Let's now focus on the addition of fractions. If we have here an example, we have to add 3 over 8 plus 1 8. To add similar fractions, add the numerator and copy the common denominator. Reduce the lowest term if necessary. 3 eighths and 1 eighths ay, although magkaiba yung kanyang numerator, pareho naman yung kanyang denominator. Therefore, sila ay similar fractions. When adding similar fractions, ang ating step 1 ay, to simply add their numerators. 3 plus 1 ay 4. Then just copy the common denominator. Kaya naman, 3 eighths plus 1 eighths is equal to 4 eighths. 4 eighths ay big number pa siya, big fraction pa siya. Pwede pa natin i-reduce, pwede pang paliitin. Doon natin ngayon nahanapin yung kanilang greatest common factor ni 4 and 8. 4 over 8, 4 and 8, ang kanilang GCF ay 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, 8 divided by 4 is 2. Si 4 eighths pag ating nireduce to lowest term, ang sagot ay 1 half. Therefore, 3 eighths plus 1 eighths is equal to 1 half. Another example, we need to add 3 fourths and 1 sixths. Kung mapapansin natin, itong dalawang fractions na ito ay may magkaibang denominators. Therefore, they are dissimilar fractions. And to add dissimilar fractions, change them to equivalent fractions by finding the least common denominator, then apply the rules in adding similar fractions. Kapag tayo ay mag-a-add ng dissimilar fractions, it is very important that we convert them into equivalent fractions first. Para from the similar fraction, sila ay maging similar fractions, maging pareho ang kanilang denominator. LCD or the least common denominator is the lowest common multiple of the denominators of a set of fractions. Iba ito sa GCF. Tandaan na ang GCF or greatest common factor ay ginagamit para ating ma-reduce or ma-simplify ang malaki pang fraction. Ang LCD naman ay ating ginagamit para ma-convert natin ang dissimilar fractions into equivalent fractions at maging similar. Magkaiba yung gamit ni GCF at LCD. Huwag tayong malilito sa kanilang dalawa. Ang una nating gagawin ay hanapin ang LCD. LCD ng alin? LCD ng 4 and 6 ng kanilang mga denominators. Hayaan muna natin yung numerators niya. At hahanapin natin yung multiple na pareho at pinakamaliit sa kanilang dalawa. So, let's start. Para sa 4, ito ang ating mga multiples. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and so on. Marami pa siyang multiples. 
4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3, 4 times 4, 4 times 5, 4 times 6, 4 times 7, at marami pa. Ganon din naman kay 6. Kunin natin yung multiples niya, 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3, 6 times 4, 6 times 5, 6 times 6, 6 times 7, at marami pang iba. But let's stop here. Among these numbers, ano nga ba yung mga numbers na common sa 4 and 6? 4 and 6 ay parehong may 12. Bukod pa dyan, pareho rin silang may 24. So, between 12 and 24, ang ating inahanap ay LCD, Least Common Denominator. 12 at 24 ay common between 4 and 6, pero ang hinahanap natin ay LCD. Therefore, yung mas maliit sa kanilang dalawa. Between 12 and 4, ito ay 12. Kaya naman, the LCD of 4 and 6 is 12. Kapag nahanap na natin ang LCD, it's time for us to change this dissimilar fractions into equivalent fractions. Gagamitin natin as denominator yung ating nakuhang LCD, which is 12. Unahin natin si 3 fourths. 12, ito ang LCD, ito si 3 fourths. Gagawin natin siya equivalent fraction, ito ang process. First, we have to divide the LCD by the denominator. Pag nakuha na natin yung quotient nilang dalawa, pataas ang ating proseso. Pwede na nating i-multiply yung ating nakuwang quotient sa LCD at denominator kay numerator. Kaya naman, 12 divided by 4 is 3. At pataas, 3 times 3 is equal to 9. Ang number na makukuha nating sagot dito sa prosesong ito ay ang gagamitin nating numerator. Therefore, 3 fourths is equal to 9 twelfths. Equivalent fractions sila. Gawin naman natin yung proseso kay 1 over 6, kay 1 6. Same process tayo. Didivide lamang sa si LCD kay denominator and yung quotient ay multiply kay numerator. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 2 times 1 is equal to 2. Ito yung gagamitin natin, numerator nakatumbas ni 1 over 6. Dahil 1 over 6 and 2 twelfths ay equivalent fractions. Now that we have similar fractions, we can then proceed to the rules of adding similar fractions. Yun nga ay, ipagpa-plus lamang natin yung numerators. 9 plus 2 is 11. And then copy the common denominator which is 12. 11 and 12 ay wala naman silang Greatest common factor, hindi na natin siya kailangan pang isimplify dahil ito na yung sagot. Therefore, 3 fourths plus 1 six is equal to 11 twelfths. Let's now focus on the subtraction of fractions. Ito ang ating example. We have to subtract 4 over 6 minus 2 over 6. Kung mapapansin natin sa kanilang dalawa, common yung kanilang denominators. Therefore, they are similar fractions. To subtract similar fractions, subtract the numerator and copy the common denominator. Then reduce to its lowest term if necessary. Kung mapapansin natin sa ating ginawang proseso kanina in adding similar fractions, pareho lang yung kanyang process dito sa subtracting similar fractions. Kaya lang, instead of addition, the process that we will be using or the operation ay subtraction. Step 1 ng subtracting similar fractions, tulad ng addition of similar fractions, you have to simply subtract the numerators and then copy their common denominator. 4 minus 2 ay 2. 6 ay kukopyahin lang natin. Kaya naman, 4 over 6 minus 2, 6 is equal to 2 over 6. However, 2, 6 can still be further reduced to its lowest term. Kailangan lamang natin hanapin yung GCF ng 2 at 6, which is 2. 2, 6 is divided to 2 over 2. Ito yung kanilang GCF. 2 divided by 2 ay 1, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. 1 third, wala nang mas maliit pa dyan. Siya na yung kanyang lowest term. Therefore, 4 over 6 minus 2 over 6 is equal to 
one third. Another example we have here, 4 over 8 minus 5 over 12. Kung mapapansin natin sa dalawang fractions na ito, sila ay dissimilar fractions dahil magkaiba ang kanilang denominators. To subtract dissimilar fractions, change them to equivalent fractions by finding the least common denominator or their LCD, then apply the rules in subtracting similar fractions. Katulad rin ito ng ating ginawa kanina nung tayo naman ay nag add ng dissimilar fractions. Napaka-importante na kapag ang fractions ay dissimilar, atin muna silang i-convert to their equivalent fraction form para maging similar fraction sila. Let's start. Ang unang-una nating gagawin ay we need to find the LCD. LCD ng alin? Ng denominators, 8 and 12. So what is the least common denominator of 8 and 12? We start by listing their multiples. Si 8 ay galing sa 8 times 1. 60 naman kay 8 times 2. 24 ay 8 times 3. 32 ay 8 times 4. And so on. Marami pang multiples si 8. Next kay 12. Ito ang kanyang multiples. 12 ay galing kay 12 times 1. Si 24 ay galing kay 12 times 2. 36 ay 12 times 3. 48 ay 12 times 4. At marami pang iba. Always remember mga bata na napakaraming multiples ng isang given number. Kaya naman, pwede na kayong tumigil sa paglilista ng kanilang multiples kung nahanap nyo na kaagad yung LCD nila. In this case, nag-stop na tayo dito dahil meron na agad akong nakita ang LCD ni 8 and 12. Yun ay 24 dahil pareho sila na may 24. Therefore, the LCD of 8 and 12 is 24. Ang ating nakuwang LCD between 8 and 12, which is 24, ang ating gagamiting denominator ng ating equivalent fractions nitong dalawang dissimilar fractions na ito. Hahanapin naman natin ang kanilang numerator. So, let's start from 4 eighths. Same process tayo. Kailangan muna nating i-divide si LCD by the denominator and then pataas pag nakuha natin yung quotient nila saka natin i-multiply doon sa numerator para makuha natin yung numerator ng ating equivalent fraction 24 divided by 8 is 3 3 times 4 is equal to 12 therefore ito yung ating gagamitin numerator 4 eighths 4 over 8 ang kanyang equivalent fraction ay si 12 over 24 Kunin naman natin yung kay 5 over 12. Same process. We need to divide the LCD by the denominator, then multiply. 24 divided by 12 is 2. 2 times 5 is equal to 10. Ito naman yung ating gagamitin numerator doon sa kabila. 10 over 24 ay ang equivalent fraction ni 5 over 12. Pag tapos nating ma-convert itong dissimilar fractions into their equivalent fractions na pareho na ang denominator, pwede na tayong mag-subtract. 12 minus 10 is equal to 2, then just copy the common denominator which is 24. Kung mapapansin natin, si 2 over 24 ay may kalakihan pa. Pwede pa natin siyang i-reduce into its lowest terms. Paano? Kukunin natin ang kanilang greatest common factor. 2 and 24 ang kanilang GCF ay 2. Pag alam na natin ang greatest common factor ng numerator and denominator na ating i-reduce into its lowest terms, pwede na natin siyang i-divide by the numerator and the denominator. Kaya naman, 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1 at 24 divided by 2 is equal to 12. 1 over 12 is the lowest term or the simplest term ng 2 over 24. 2 over 24 and 1 over 12 ay equivalent fractions. Kaya naman, 4 over 8 minus 5 over 12 is equal to 1 over 12. Punta naman tayo kay multiplication of fractions. To multiply fractions, simply multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. In symbol, a over B multiplied to C over D will be equal to AC over DB, where B and D are not equal to zero. Hindi pwede maging zero ang ilalim or denominator ng isang fractions. 
We have here a given example. We have to multiply 3 fourths and 5 sixths. Step 1 natin, simply multiply. 3 times 5 is equal to 15 and 4 times 6 is equal to 24. 15 over 24, this is still a big fraction. Pwede pa natin siyang pababain. Let's reduce it to its lowest term. 15 and 24 ang kanilang GCF, yung kanilang greatest common factor ay 3. Therefore, i-divide natin yung 3 to both the numerator and the denominator. 15 divided by 3 is 5 and 24 divided by 3 is 8. 15 over 24 and 5 eighths are equivalent fractions. Therefore, 3 fourths times 5 sixths is equal to 5 over 8. Another example, this time we will be multiplying mixed fractions. Bago tayo mag-proceed dun sa ating ginawa kanina na multiplication of fractions, we have to convert or express these mixed fractions into improper fractions first. 2 and 1 fourths is equal to 9 fourths when converted to its improper fraction form. Paano nakuha yung 9 fourths? 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1, kaya naging 9. Then copy the denominator which is 4. Dito naman tayo sa pangalawa. So, 5 and 4, 6. Naging 34 over 6. 5 times 6 is equal to 30 plus 4, 34. Then, copy the denominator, 6. Kaya naman si 5 and 4, 6 ay naging 34 over 6. After natin makonvert itong ating mga mixed fractions into their improper fraction form, we can now proceed into multiplying the fractions. Let's multiply them as ease. 9 times 34 is equal to 306, and 4 times 6 is equal to 24. 306 over 24 is a big fraction. can reduce it into its simplest form. We need to find its GCF. Ang GCF ng 306 at 24 ay 6. Kaya naman, let's divide the GCF to both the numerators and the denominator. 306 divided by 6 is equal to 51. And 24 divided by 6 is equal to 4. 51 over 4 is an improper fraction. We need to convert it back to its mixed fraction form dahil ang ating mga given ay mga mixed fractions. To convert an improper fraction into a mixed fraction, we need to use the long division. 51 ay ating ilalagay sa loob dahil siya ay numerator at 4 naman sa labas dahil siya ay denominator. 51 divided by 4 is equal to 12. 12 times 4 is equal to 48. And then subtract 51 and 48. Meron tayong remainder na 3. Let's use 3, the remainder, as the numerator of our fraction part. And then copy the denominator, which is 4. Therefore, 2 and 1 fourth multiplied to 5 and 4 sixths is equal to 12 and 3 fourths. Let's go to the division of fractions. To divide fractions, take the reciprocal of the second fraction, then proceed to the rules of multiplying fractions. In symbol, a over b divided by c over d will become a over b multiplied to b over c is equal to a d over b c, where b and c are not equal to zero. This is an example, divide 4 fifths by 2 thirds. Ang ating step 1 ay taking the reciprocal of the second fraction. 2 thirds, itong ating second fraction, yung 3 na kanina ay kanyang denominator, gagawin nating numerator na. At yung 2 na kanyang originally ay numerator, magiging denominator na. Babalik ta rin lang natin yung pwesto ni numerator at denominator ni 2 thirds. Pagtapos na tayo sa step 1, nakuha na natin yung reciprocal. Proceed to step 2, to the rules of multiplying fractions. Lagay natin si 4 over 5. Hindi siya nabago dahil siya ang first fraction. We don't need to take its reciprocal. Ito na yung reciprocal ni 2 third. Magiging 3 over 2 na siya. Multiply as is. 4 times 3 is equal to 12. And 5 times 2 is equal to 10. Let's simplify 12 over 10 by finding its GCF which is 2. Alam na natin na 2 ang GCF ng 12 and 10. Divide them. 12 divided by 2 ay 6, and then 10 divided by 2 ay 5. Therefore, 
4 over 5 divided by 2 over 3 is equal to 6 over 5 6 fifths because 12 tenths and 6 fifths are equivalent fractions. Word problem. It took Jose one-thirds of an hour to complete his math homework on Monday, two-fourths of an hour on Tuesday, and two-fifths of an hour on Wednesday. How many hours did it take Jose to complete his homework all together? Ito si Jose, ito ang kanyang schedule nung siya ay gumawa ng kanyang math homework. On Monday, sa isang oras, gumawa siya ng one-third of an hour. Noong Tuesday, two-fourths of an hour. At nung Wednesday naman ay two-fifths of an hour. Ang tanong bale ay, ilang oras ni Jose natapos yung kanyang math homework? That is why we need to add all these fractions together. One-third plus two-fourths plus two-fifths, yun ang ating aalamin. Itong tatlong fraction na ito ay may iba't ibang denominators. Therefore, they are dissimilar fractions. At ang ating step lagi para sa mga dissimilar fractions ay to change them into their equivalent fractions na may pare-parehong denominators para maging similar fractions sila. Para magawa natin yun, for step 1, we always need to find their LCD. LCD ng mga denominators na 3, 4, and 5. List down the multiples of 3, list down the multiples of 4, at ng 5. Napakaraming mga multiples ng 3, 4, and 5, pero pwede ka nang tumigil kung nakita mo na yung pinakamaliit na common na multiple sa kanilang tatlo. In this case, lahat sila ay pare-parehong may 60. Therefore, the LCD of 3, 4, and 5 is 60. Alam na natin yung LCD. Itong LCD na ito ang gagamitin nating denominator nilang tatlo para sa kanilang equivalent fraction. Start tayo kay 1 third. Gamitin nating denominator niya si 60. Alam naman natin yung process kung paano tayo kukuha ng equivalent fractions. Divide natin si LCD by the denominator and then pataas, multiply natin kay 1. Kaya naman si 1 third ay katumbas din ni 20 over 60 dahil 60 divided by 3 is equal to 20. 20 times 1 is equal to 20, then copy the denominator. 1 third and 20 over 60 ay equivalent fractions. Next, punta naman tayo kay 2 fourths. 60 divided by 4 is equal to 15. 15 times 2 is equal to 30. Kaya 2 fourths is equal to 30 over 60. Punta naman tayo kay 2 fifths. 60 divided by 5 is equal to 12. Times 2, it's 24. Kaya naman 2 fifths is equal to 24 over 60. At dahil alam na nga natin yung kanilang mga equivalent fractions, sila ay mga similar fractions na, it's time for us to go to step 2, adding similar fractions. I-add lang natin sila all together, 20 plus 30 plus 24, and then copy their common denominator, 60. 20 plus 30 plus 24 is equal to 74, and the denominator is 60. Now, 74 over 60 is an example of an improper fraction. I-convert natin siya into mixed number para malaman natin kung ilang oras nga ba talaga na kompleto ni Jose ang kanyang math homework. Di-divide lang natin siya. 74 ay nasa loob ng division line dahil always nasa loob ang numerator at ang denominator ay nasa labas. 74 divided by 60 is equal to 1. 1 times 60 is equal to 60. 74 minus 60 is equal to 14. 1 ang kanyang whole number and then yung 14 na remainder ang gagamitin natin numerator niya at 60 ay kukopahin lamang natin yung denominator natin. Kaya naman, 74 over 60 is equal to 1 and 14 60. Kaya sa tanong na kung ilang oras nga bang nakompleto ni Jose ang kanyang homework ay 1 and 14 over 60. Isang oras and 14 over 60. Or ito ay 1 hour and 14 minutes. Dahil sa isang oras, meron tayong 60 minutes. Ibig sabihin ng 14 out of 60, sa 60 minutes, meron lamang nakuha na 14 minutes yose. Therefore, ang kanyang math homework ay natapos niya ng isang oras 
at 14 minutes. 14 minutes out of 60. Jose studied for 1 hour and 14 minutes. Another word problem? Mika has 3 and 7 16 centimeter of wire. She needs only 1 and 5 8 centimeter of wire for her project and DLE. How much wire does she need to cut? Ito si Mika at ang kanyang TLE project. According to the word problem, si Mika raw ay may 3 and 7 16 centimeter ng wire. Pero ang kailangan niya lang ay 1 and 5 8. Therefore, ang tanong ay, ilang centimeters ng wire ang kailangan putulin ni Mika from 3 and 7 16 dahil ang kailangan niya lang talaga ay 1 and 5 8. We will be using subtraction as our operation. Ibabawas natin yung 1 and 5 8 sky, 3 and 7 16. Dahil itong dalawa ay mixed fractions, convert muna natin sila into improper fractions. Start tayo kay 3 and 7 16. To convert mixed fractions into improper fractions, we need to multiply the whole number by the denominator. And once we have the product, we have to add it to its numerator. Then, copy the denominator. Pataas yung kanyang proseso. Simula natin kay 3 and 7 sixteenths. 3 and 7 sixteenths is equal to 55 over 16. Dahil, 3 times 16 is equal to 48 plus 7, kaya 55. Then, copy the denominator. Kay 1 and 5 eighths naman, it is equal to 13 over 8 dahil 1 times 8 is equal to 8 plus 5, 13. Kaya 13 ang numerator, then copy the denominator. Dahil meron na tayong improper fractions, pwede na tayong mag-proceed. 55 over 16 minus 13 over 8. Aalamin lamang natin iyong sagot. However, these two are dissimilar fractions. Kaya hindi natin siya pwedeng isubtract agad. Kailangan muna natin siyang i-convert to its equivalent fractions para maging similar fraction siya. To do so, kailangan lamang nating alamin ang kanilang LCD. Pag alam na natin, susundin natin yung process na i-divide natin yung LCD by the denominator and then multiply. Pataas siya. Finding its LCD, ang 16 and 8 ay may LCD na 16. Therefore, sa step 3, sila ay similar fractions na sila ay kinonvert na natin from dissimilar fractions to similar fractions. Ito ang kanilang equivalent fractions. So, si 55 over 16 ay 55 over 16 pa rin. Dahil 16 divided by 16 is equal to 1 times 55, 55. Then, copy the denominator 16 which is LCD nga nila. Kay 13 over 8 naman, 16 divided by 8 is 2. 2 times 13 is 26. Then, use the LCD as denominators. Kaya naman sila ay similar fractions now. We can now proceed to the subtraction of similar fractions. 55 minus 26 is equal to 29. Copy their common denominator. 29 over 16 ay isang improper fraction. 29 over 16 is an improper fraction. Dahil lang tanong ay mga mixed fractions. Siko convert natin si improper fraction na 29 over 16 into its mixed fraction form. Paano? Siyempre, long division tayo. Numerator ay 29. Lagi siyang nasa loob. Divided by denominator nasa labas. 29 divided by 16 is 1. 1 times 16 is 16. 29 minus 16 is 13. Use the remainder as a numerator at, and then copy the denominator which is 16. Kaya naman, si 29 over 16 is equal to 1 and 13 16. Therefore, Mika needs to cut 1 and 13 over 16 centimeters of wire for her TLE project. Another word problem, at Guevara clan reunion, 4 and 1 half kilograms of spaghetti was left. If there are 3 families, how much each family can take home equally? Ito ang Guevara clan, nahahati siya sa tatlong pamilya. May natira daw na spaghetti at ahatiin nila ito equally sa kanilang tatlo. Dahil kailangan natin siyang iparte equally, we will need to use division as our operation. 
Ang una natin gagawin ay, we need to convert this mixed fraction into its improper fraction form. 4 and 1 half is equal to 9 over 2. 4 times 2 is equal to 8 plus 1, 9. Use it as numerator, then copy the denominator 2. Yung 3 naman, this is a whole number. Any whole number, pag siya ay ating i-convert into fraction, lagi siyang may invisible na 1 as denominator. Kaya alam na natin yung kanilang fraction form. Meron na tayong 9 over 2 and 3 over 1. Para ma-divide natin siya, ang rule ay, we will need to take the reciprocal of the second fraction. The second fraction is 3 over 1. Kaya, yung 3 over 1, ang kanyang reciprocal ay pagbabalik ta rin ang pwesto ng numerator and denominator. From 3 over 1, naging 1 third siya. 9 over 2 ay as is lang. Hindi natin siya i reciprocal dahil hindi naman siya second fraction. Then, from division, tayo ay magpo-proceed na to multiplication. So, we'll have to multiply 9 over 2 and 1 third. 9 over 2 times 1 third is equal to 9 over 6 dahil 9 times 1 is 9, 2 times 3 is 6. 9 over 6 is an improper fraction. Ito ay convert natin sa mixed fraction form. To convert an improper fraction to a mixed fraction, we need to use the long division method. Ilalagay natin yung 9 sa loob ng division line dahil siya ay numerator. Lahat ng numerators, kada magdi-divide tayo ay laging nasa loob. At ang 6 naman na denominator ay laging nasa labas. 9 divided by 6 is equal to 1. 1 times 6 is equal to 6. 9 minus 6 is 3. Use 3, a remainder, as the numerator and then copy the denominator. Therefore, 9 over 6 is also equal to 1 and 3 sixths. 3 sixths ay pwede pa natin i-reduce into its simplest form. Ang kanilang GCF ay 3. I-divide natin yung 3 ngayon both to the numerator and the denominator. 3 divided by 3 is 1 and 6 divided by 3 is 2. Therefore, 3 sixths is also equivalent to 1 half. 1 and 3 sixths can be further reduced to its lowest term, which is 1 and 1 half. Each family from the Guevara clan can take home 1 and a half kilogram of spaghetti. And that's it for our video for today, mga bata. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ang Teacher Mo Sa Math, for more grade 7 contents. I will really appreciate it if you'd also hit the like button and please share this video para mas marami pa akong grade 7 na mga bata ang maabot at maturuan. Dahil ako si Ma'am Regine, ang Teacher Mo Sa Math.